One of the more interesting ways to use the Rust and Python bridge PyO3 is to actually import Python inside of Rust project and use whatever libraries you need to use directly in Rust. So you get the leverage of the Rust ecosystem, the great packaging, the great command line tool story, safety, performance, but you also get to uh, use the Python code that maybe has some logic that you need. So let's take a look here at how you do this. Like high level, you use PyO3, you go through and prepare free threaded Python, and then walk through the code step by step. So what we can do here is actually dive into the project, and you can see here the structure. I have PyCall, and I also have a main.rs. So in this particular project, very tiny amount of code here, and in terms of the import, I have a PyO3 imported right here in the project. If we take a look here at uh, the code itself, first step we have under PyO3 here, Prelude. This is going to use the PyO3 library to, to interact with the Python interpreter. Uh, and this line is going to import all of the modules that you need. The main function in Rust is going to be the thing that's necessary to run uh, a Rust a script. In general, you need to actually run things uh, with the main in Rust. And then the Py result here is basically the result that's actually returned here. And then this is the line that actually lets us use Python. So we prepare free threaded Python. So we're essentially going to release the gil and then we set up some values. So I first go through here and I create a vector, which is like a Python list. And then I print a message that says we're going to pass these values to Python to sum. Next up here, we have Python with gil. And then under this, we have built-ins. So these built-ins uh, are going to be what's you know generally available from Python. So they have lots of built-in functions. In this case, we're going to use the sum, and we're going to actually pass those values in that were defined earlier, and then use Python sum to actually do a sum. And then we go through and we print this out. Now next up, the other thing we can do that's pretty fun is that if there's any built-in um, libraries inside of Python, the standard library is pretty big, you can actually just say import and then the name of the library. In this case, we're going to use the OS uh, module, which has uh, really a ton of different features that uh, have been developed for decades. In this case, we're going to use the get env user. So we're going to look at this uh, user uh, value right here. So essentially, this is going to tell us, you know, who's logged into the machine uh, as uh, and who's actually running this particular program, which is actually very useful. And I don't have to write anything myself. I just go ahead and use Python. And then finally, we go ahead and print out who that user is. So to run it, also mention a few things here. First up, whenever I'm doing something with Rust, I like to actually go through and create the different steps inside of a makefile. So here we have the build process. If I needed to build a release, I have the lint, which always is a good idea to lint your code. So I just say make lint. Uh oh, we have some issues here where maybe we would need to fix those uh, for a production system. In fact, we see that really the main issue that they're just they're, they're describing here is that instead of doing print with the exclamation point, they would actually like it if I did um, print ln. So let's go ahead and fix that. Let's go ahead and fix the lint, which is a good uh, best practice here. Never let your code have a, a you know essentially a lint that's not passing. So we'll go ln, and then we'll do uh, the exclamation point. Same thing. We'll go print ln, and then go through here print ln. Great. Now if I go ahead and I say make lint, we've been able to actually make it pass. So this is really critical because when you're um, working with Rust, it's such a safe language that it's a good idea to not only let it compile, but also make sure that the lint passes. And again, I make it easy because of the makefile. Also, it's important to format your code. So if we go through here and we go ahead and say, you know, make format, it's also a good idea to just make sure that it's formatted correctly. For example, if I added a bunch of spaces here and we said maybe added a bunch of spaces here, and then I say make format, this should format it for me. There we go. So there's actually set up the way that I want. Now, the other thing to be aware of as well uh, is that we also could either run cargo run or do make run. It's essentially the same thing. So we'll just go ahead and say cargo run. It goes through, it compiles it, 
and then we can see here that in fact we have passing values to python to sum we're going to pass in that vector then we go through here and we do the sum which is six and then finally because i'm using github code spaces it finds out that i'm actually using a user called vs code which is actually pretty useful because sometimes you're not aware that you're using a particular user and i'm actually showing that python is using this user so very useful and actually extremely short uh, example here to call uh, rust from python and in this particular example here we've been able to really get everything working in a very simple way and you can see here that uh, calling uh, Python and Rust together uh, is a very straightforward thing to, to do when you're actually building out a integration.